In this example problem, we're going to do free body diagram analysis of a helicopter flying through the air. It involves a diagonal force and a changing velocity. I did a similar video kind of introducing this. This is a second example, this time with something changing velocity instead of a constant velocity. So let's read the problem. The helicopter speeds up as it flies to the right. That tells me I expect my net force to be in the direction that it's speeding up which would be to the right, we'll get to that later. It produces a 15 kilonewton thrust force and experiences five kilonewtons of drag. And then we're calculating two things, the helicopter's weight, that's its force of gravity downward, and the net force it experiences. And remember, net force is the overall resultant force when you add up the force vectors. So first thing, I'm gonna draw that thrust force. I've got the arrow kind of already drawn for me there. I'm gonna draw it a little bit bigger and label that 15 kilonewtons of thrust. I drew it a little bit bigger because I'm gonna resolve it into the components. I want to make sure I have plenty of room to write on there. Other forces acting on it, of course we have the force of gravity which is downward and we don't know what the value of that force or the magnitude of that force is yet. And then we have a drag force. We have five kilonewtons of drag. Now that drag, because the helicopter is moving to the right, the drag is going to be to the left. Because it's to the left, I'm going to define that as negative five kilonewtons instead of just five kilonewtons. There's no normal force because the helicopter is not touching any physical surface and there's no friction because of the same reason. So these are all the forces that I have acting on the helicopter. Now I'm gonna take that diagonal force, I'm gonna resolve it into its two components. So I've got that horizontal component to the side, and I got that vertical component up, and I draw them like this so that they form a triangle, and I can use some trig to solve for the magnitude of each of those two components. So let's go ahead and do that trig. Um, so let's start off with cosine of 60 degrees. I'm gonna solve for this adjacent component first. So cosine of 60 degrees will be adjacent, this component right here over the hypotenuse of 15. And that component I don't know, I'm gonna call it FTHX. It's the thrust force, it's the horizontal component, or X of the thrust force, over my hypotenuse of 15, multiply by 15 on each side, and I get FTHX equals 15 cosine of 60 degrees. In the calculator, that comes out to be 7.5 kilonewtons. Also, if we know this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we could just divide that in half to cross the 60 degrees to get 7.5. But either way, 7.5 kilonewtons is the horizontal component. And then I'll use sine to find the vertical component. So sine of 60 degrees equals opposite, which would be force of thrust in the y or vertical direction, over my hypotenuse of 15. Solve that for FTHY, and I get 13 kilonewtons. Now at this point, since I've resolved that diagonal force into its components, I will no longer need that 15 kilonewtons value. In fact, I'm gonna cross it out on my diagram here so I don't accidentally try to add it to something later on in the problem. We've resolved that into the 7.5 and the 13, so we don't need the 15 anymore. Now we wanna think about this horizontally and vertically separate from each other. So I'm gonna label my diagram here horizontal and vertical and do the analysis separately. Thinking horizontally, I see that it speeds up as it flies to the right. So that tells me that since it's speeding up, it's not a constant speed or not a constant velocity, that the forces horizontally have to be unbalanced. Or in other words, the net force is not zero horizontally. So I'm gonna label that, that F net in the X or horizontal direction is not zero. Vertically, the helicopter's one, not moving up or down at all, and it's not gonna start moving up or down at all. Um, and because of that, I know that vertically, the forces have to be balanced because it's a constant velocity of zero vertically. And so I'm gonna write there that my F net in the Y or vertical direction is zero. So I already know the F net vertically. Now let's jump back up to the horizontal and I could do these in either order, vertical first, horizontal first, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna jump back up to the horizontal here. I know the F net is not zero. So I'm gonna solve for what that F net horizontally would be. I know that my F net is what I get when I add the forces together. But remember, I'm just looking horizontally right now, so I'm not gonna add all the forces. I'm just gonna add the horizontal forces. So F net in the X direction, or horizontal direction, equals, well, I've got two forces here. I've got the force of drag, which is horizontal, and I have the horizontal component of my thrust, which is horizontal, so that's FTHX. All right, so let's sub in for what we know. I can't sub in for this yet because we know it's not zero, but we don't know what the net force in the horizontal is yet. I know the drag is negative five, and I know the thrust force is 7.5. When I add those together, I get F net X equals 2.5 kilonewtons, or positive 2.5 kilonewtons. That positive specifically means that those kilonewtons of force are to the right, because remember, I'm looking horizontally. And so to the right, as in not to the left, not up or down, because remember, this is horizontal. So my F net for this problem is 2.5 kilonewtons to the right. 
I don't have to worry about any vertical component of that F net because remember we said F net and the vertical is zero newtons. All right, now let's jump down to the vertical to figure out what our force of gravity is. So I know that those forces have to add up to be zero. You could probably figure this out on your own without writing this out, that 13 kilonewtons up, for it to be balanced, force of gravity has to be 13 kilonewtons down. I'm still gonna write out the algebraic way to show that. So my F net in the Y direction equals my vertical forces added together. So I've got FTHY right here, and I have force of gravity going down. So I'm gonna add those two up and they equal my F net. My F net is zero, which we already said, vertically. And then FTHY, we know it's 13 kilonewtons. Force of gravity, we don't know yet. Subtract 13 kilonewtons on both sides, and we get force of gravity equals 13 kilonewtons. Now that negative there, in this case, we're looking vertically, so that negative means downward. So I'll just rewrite that 13 kilonewtons downward. All right, so we're done with this problem. Big takeaways, remember, when you have a diagonal force, you need to resolve it into its horizontal and vertical components, and then never use the magnitude or the number of the diagonal force again after that. You also need to analyze the horizontal and the vertical completely separately. Notice, I never added any vertical force, like this 13, to any horizontal force, like the 7.5 or negative 5. You'll never add a vertical force to a horizontal force. If you needed to do that, you would need to do it with a vector addition diagram because those are gonna be in opposite directions and you'd end up having to do some other stuff with that. So remember, never add the horizontals to the verticals. Analyze them completely separately. If the object is speeding up or slowing down or changing directions, then you know one of your F nets in horizontal or vertical won't be zero. But if it's not speeding up or slowing down in a particular direction, then the F net equals zero for that direction. All right, good luck analyzing some free body diagrams. <laughs>